so we get a little bit of a reputation. If someone's doing some shit, flexing a little bit, dude, I don't like bullets. I never have. And you know what? Something that always stuck out to me is usually a bully has never gotten punched in the mouth. And this kid in the front goes, there's some fat guy over here handing out beers. I stuck my head out the window. It was my dad at the doorway. And every Marine that got off, he handed him a beer and gave him a hug. I was like, I know that fat guy. That's my dad. Or to the Hard to Kill podcast. Episode 14. 14. We're cranking them out now. Time is getting harder and harder to find, but we're still knocking them out. Still in the trenches. Still staying consistent. Still hooking and jabbing. Still talking about some shit. Hard to kill. You know? Feels good to be back. We haven't been in the basement in like I know. a week it's and a half. It's been a week and a half. We had, we, had a, we had a tough week last week. So I recently started a new job. Yes. <clears throat> back in the union, back um, swinging a hammer, um, seeing how it goes, um, working on gas lines. So that should be interesting. In the hole? In the hole. That sounds miserable. Yeah. They, like, give you an extensive onboarding because, like, just in case you get fucked up. In case you, know you blow I mean? up or something. Yeah. In case we really got to use our insurance, <laughs> just write, write your yeah. shit out, legible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no smoking in the hole. Yeah, exactly. Nothing. Dude, that you have to wear fireproof uh, clothing, so I'm in like a coverall right now because I don't have fireproof shit. Costs like an extra twenty bucks for shit. Yeah, that far. It's wicked heavy. Yeah, it is. I sweat like a motherfucker. Yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, in a hole with a pipe. You know, doing my thing. Yeah, stay uh, staying consistent over here. Steady workforce, steady workflow for me. We are we are part of that uh, blue claw blue collar working. You know, every day, usually you'll get a Saturday in if the OT's there. Yeah. It's, dude, working Saturdays is weird because when it's available, you don't want it. No, but it's such a tease. I know. Like, you want the 200? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Basically, it, two days of work. It depends who the foreman is, too, because if, you, if you've got a good foreman Saturdays, uh, they can make it a breeze. They can. They can. Everyone right. doesn't want to fucking be there on Saturday. That could be a quick, easy 200. Or that could be a ball break. Absolutely. Miserable 200. Absolutely. That I All the incentive around. you need, dude, is you lay out what you need done. Yes. Lay out what you need done so I can cover my ass. Just give me the list. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Give me the list. We'll knock that out by break, dude. You know what I'm saying? Or like, we'll make, we'll make it so we're there like till 10. But that's the best. If you get a foreman that gives you work, you knock it out, get it done right after break, which is like 10, 11 o'clock, and he lets you fly. Right. That's, yeah. what, that's when you give the old dad. Uh, I'm going to take a shift. Yeah, exactly. Uh, see you Monday. Classic. Mm-hmm. So we had uh, we had our first gift from a listener. Gift, yeah. Thank you. Yes, dude. I'm I, touched. I, I yeah. am too, man. That's that's huge. You're buying us a drink, dude. It's like it's like you're across the bar from us, and you you know some real motherfuckers, and you're just like you know what? And he's and get, the, get the, him some good good whiskey. The best part is he's from across the pond. Yeah. I really think what it is, I think you were just offended by us drinking Connor shit. Yeah. <laughs> no one likes Connor over there, huh? No, oh, man. We had a lot of a lot of people ripping on the Connor McGregor yeah. whiskey. I thought it was fine. I, I thought it was fine. I, I was surprised. I thought it would be shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it, But it drank like a kind of like a watered-down Jameson. Yeah. Like Jameson. I mean, it got the job done. Yeah. I got a good smack off it, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So good I, hey, how are you? Our boy Stevie Lines. Pull Stevie the, Lines. Pull up that comment he sent me. We'll do. Crack it open, dude. Oh, well, let me break it out. Dun, dun, dun. We have a gift. Hopefully Dickie can give us, like, a cool sound with that. <laughs> red breast. Apparently it's that stuff. Apparently is, red breast is that drink. Apparently that's the good good. So we're going to, you know, we're going to pour up to you, and we're going to give you a live uh, shout-out here, Stevie Lines. Red breast, single pot stilled Irish whiskey, aged 15 years. 15? What does that mean when it's aged, dude? Does, that means they put the, it in the... The first thing I think, it's going to taste smooth, and it's going to get me fucked up. Yeah. That's what aged means, right? I that's think. That, that's it. Yeah. That's you know what not I mean? like, oh, when well, someone says something's aged, it's like, yeah, it's going to get you. Uncle John's been on the aged whiskey yeah. today. <laughs> He'll be in bed by 7.30. Yeah, something like that. Stevie Lines, you know, I... We gotta try oh, wow. to send something Look at back. This. 
That just looks like trouble to him. Steve, okay, I see it. Right, kid. Stevie, thank you. Product of Ireland. Keep in mind, this is not a cheap bottle, guys. Stevie, no, uh, like Stevie, bottle. Stevie went in on us. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah. First gift from a fan. That's awesome, man. You need a knife? If you no, I get twisted off. If you can find his comments. Stevie Lyons. Okay, so Steve started talking to me about two or three days ago, and he was honestly he something I could tell instantly is he watched us. As I said in a couple podcasts ago, dude, I thank you for the daily listener or like the you know the regular the listeners regulars, that will yeah, listen yeah. every week. You know what I mean? Because the I know what that means to have a podcast that you fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and you can you, you're waiting for it, dude. You're like, dude, come on, this gets me through my fucking bullshit. I have to go through. Right. That's what I do when I'm going through some shit like I don't want to do. Chuck on a good podcast, dude, and it just fucking zones you out. You knock it out, dude, and it's it's like you never were doing anything. Yeah, most of the time you can learn something too, which that I, too I find that, that is that, nice. That's like the best part. Of I it. love when I pick up a little something from a podcast, dude, yeah. because it's like oh shit, yeah. You know, how you know we drink trashy whiskey because I've never pulled the label off of a bottle <laughs> like this before. I mean, we're usually Jameson guys through and through. You know, represent the brand. Give us something, Jameson. Come on, dude. If we got fucking homeboy on, in in Ireland telling us this is the shit, smell that. Who? Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'll fucking put some lead in your pencil, huh? A little hair in your chest. I'm fucking headed duty for our boy Stevie. Stevie lines with the oh, drink. Oh, thing. We just uh, coming. Nice, nice stiff. Boy. So he said that he's uh, showed a few guys the channel. Um, and they are watching it on their own time and getting back to me and either thanking me or saying how good the show is, which I hope that's true. <laughs> yeah. That would mean the world to me, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you're shouting us out. Great work. Uh, the dark humor. We understand you just can only go so far, but before the cops are called on your asses. Yeah. It's, uh, Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's fucking true. <laughs> There's always so much you can put out on like public airways. But keep it up. We all love a cheeky giggle. Cheeky giggle. So that's just like a, a funny between guys that know what's good. Cheeky. That's, that must be an Irish term. Yeah. Um... Both we were talking to taking the stigma out of PTSD, so you know about PTSD. Okay, not to sound like ignorant, like you wouldn't know about it, but as you said in here, a lot of your stuff isn't reported. We have we don't, I don't know what the Irish Defense Forces are doing. Do you? You ever? Well, hear about we them? haven't even got into the like where this guy Steve Lines is from. He I mean he's. I thought they assumed that from the whiskey. Steve Steve Lines is an Irishman. He is, and the the note on the bottle that he sent us says, uh, "For Nick and Mike, thank you from your supporters all over." Faga breach. Faga I hope bleach. I hope we're saying I, it right. Yeah, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but because I looked it up and it sounded badass. Shit, yeah. what was it again? Dude? Well, hold on. Let's, he was a member of the Irish Defense Forces. Defense Forces. Uh, retired. Works a job now. Uh, works so, graveyard shift. Is that what you're doing? Is that are you listening to our podcast at work? Or are you still in the Defense Forces? We weren't sure on that, but yeah, we you took, might, have, might have to clarify that for us. Too. Yeah, but uh, either way, shout out to you. Yeah. Um, but fag, uh, or Fagabla is a battle cry of Irish origin, meaning clear the way, which is kind of like, you know, high speed, low drag for yeah. us. You know what I mean? Clear the way. Yeah. Or like a hoorah. Yeah, yeah. One of them. Right. It's first recorded Richmond. Either way, that's cool. Yeah. So Steve reached out to Nick and, uh, ripped us for drinking McGregor whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Said it was trash. And he was going to get together with his buddies and put some money together and they were going to buy us a nice bottle of whiskey yep. and that's what they did came through said he wanted to buy us a drink steve thank you very much to for you the drink. cheers salute salute faggot bleach Ooh, i like that i like that too Ooh, it keeps you still feel warm after oh yeah that. that's oh, nice i feel like i just walked out of an irish pub yeah I'd like to have one with you, buddy. I'd like to go over there. Or if you come here, either way. We got to get that dude on the phone. Yeah, we do. At that study to be an interview. We get, like, those Irish defense guys. Let's get those guys as a call in. Drop us in the comments. You, awesome. you want us to talk to these guys? Drop that shit in the comments. We'll get them in there. We'll get them on the fucking phone. That'd be you badass. Know? That'd be sweet. That's um, the first gift we've ever been sent, really. Or the fact that he's talking about us with other guys. I, it, Oh yeah. Whether it's his friends or his guys he was in the military with, I was I don't know, I wasn't sure on, but regardless, thank you, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. 
send us some nice We stuff. need that shit. Like, we need to hear that you guys like this. Because you got to understand, we don't, we can't tell that, for some reason, so I was going over the analytics and I found out that the most people that watch our pod, the majority of people that watch our podcast aren't subscribed. Oh, really? Yeah. So, please subscribe to us. It would mean the world to us. If you're watching us, please just hit that, that little bell. The followers help us. We're trying to make this podcast bigger. Um, I know it's, I, I know, you know, I, I'm actually guilty of it too. I listen to mad podcasts and I always hear them saying it. Yeah. Subscribe. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I'm like, I think about it like, oh shit. You know what I mean? It doesn't, now you do. Yeah. Now we know the analytics of the operation and how it works. Well, you want to see that your product is liked. Well, you want to see that it's moving. That's, that's what I want. To that see. gives you confidence to keep going about it. You right. know what I mean? We want to have a product that works, obviously. I never thought in a million years that there'd be some guy working graveyard shit and graveyard shift in Ireland listening to me talk. Oh, for no, that, 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 that's such to a, me talk for that's so eight cool hours even saying, shift, dude, you know, thank you, bro. Stevie, this is exactly what we need, bro. We need a little pat on the back and that's what this was. We appreciate it, man. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Because honestly, we get we get a lot of like halfway comments sometimes. Like, I can't tell if people are like completely rocking with us because we are kind of like right wing to a certain degree. You know, we do support the military and we do support you know basic. I don't know. Well, speak for yourself on that portion. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, I mean that we we. There's a certain demographic. I mean, not everybody's gonna like you. Like, not everyone's gonna love you at the top, and we've we've seen that. I've, you know, we've had the haters, and it's fine. I don't. It, it rolls right off my back. You take it personally. I can't stand it, dude. Oh, it doesn't bother me a bit, but he gets fired up for it. I can't understand it. Yeah, that's my thing. I'm just like, how, like, how, how are you guys gonna like challenge us or argue? Like, we're, we're straight up, you know, going for. I mean. I thought guys like us were supported to a certain degree. I mean, we're going over there and f fighting for freedoms. You know, it's not like we're completely government this, government that. No, but I mean, but it breeds a certain mentality in you when you when you go to war and fight for this country. Like, no, I don't want to give a lot of shit away. <laughs> like, mm. no, that's really what I'm thinking. I'm not so more so thinking like what. Is my political party going over there? What yeah. am I? Fi I'm more so thinking of just like for us, dude, like right. to keep yeah, us that's how, safe. <laughs> I, I look at it like a realist. That's like because I've seen real. I've seen where... now. When you say you've seen real, what do you mean? Are you talking about just tragedies? Because when I think yeah. of when I think of how Afghan was and how just absolutely desolate the people were, dude. Like yeah. how far behind they were over just what? Nothing. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but that could happen. And I think of that when, I mean, that's what I was thinking when I joined the military. I wanted pr to protect, I felt strong. Right. And I wanted to protect my country. I completely supported my country and I wanted, I always think if I had a family or if I had people that I, you know, my family, my intimate family, my direct family, I want to protect them. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, yesterday was 21 years since 9-11. That's today, huh? Yesterday. Yesterday. Today's the 12th. Is it? I think. Yeah, today's the 12th. Yep. Okay. Um, Damn, yeah. I didn't realize we were that close. To, I didn't realize that was it was September 11th. That, I mean, that what would you think, like, as just, keep in mind, we were how old? I was in, like, seventh grade. So we were 12, 13? Yeah. All you hear about is America is attacked. And I remember everyone was just so, people I had never, that I considered strong to seem so sad. And, and, and um, like, down very down De like scared a little bit i saw way more of a of like a, a upset because they fucked with the wrong country like they've upset that your own home turf was hit you know i think that's how a i lot think that was a shock to a lot of people dude i uh, yeah we hadn't been hit since pearl Harbor. yeah you know that's that's huge and honestly i don't know what was behind 9-11 I don't know if, if, if I'm going to be real about it, dude, I can understand you guys in the comments, man, because I, I've looked at that video and been like, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things that, and this is not to disrespect anyone that passed away. You Whatever know, happened, it was a are terrible you, are tragedy. You a con conspiracy theory, you think? Dude, I've been ducking back on it lately, dude. Really? Get, get the foil. There's a lot of fucking things that just are weird in that situation, dude, like... To what was going on with uh, airport uh, scanners at that time? We had a we had a um, basically the military did a mock 
9-11 the day before. They completed a basically some kind of maneuver in the air as if we were to be attacked on our home soil. That was before the day before 9-11. They, Tower 7 collapsing, why? Why did it look like they were like, when I, when I think of a plane hitting a building, and I keep in mind, this is someone that's seen explosions. I've seen, we have seen things blown the fuck up. Yeah. A lot of them. <clears throat> and that looked like a detonation. It looked like something was, I get a plane hit a building. Why does that make it collapse? I get that it's got hot gasoline, you know what I mean? I don't see that taking down a building, dude. I really don't. Think of the struts that's in a building, especially like that. These are iron, wrought iron struts that go, I, I don't know how fucking tall the goddamn thing is, but you know how strong this stuff is. Yeah. Like, how does a, pl it looks like something, and this is just from my point of view, looking at it, seeing detonations, and seeing explosions, it looked like there was some kind of debt, debt, controlled debt on like maybe a set couple of floors or something like that. That's what it looked like from an outside eye. Keep in mind, I can see a scenario where a fucking plane hits a building and it fucking, I mean, the fuel melts all the struts and the beams and the walls, like maybe. But I can understand that to a certain degree. But there was a lot of anomalies that happened within 9-11 that I think can make any sane person at least look at it twice. Um, and if you look at what's behind to us going to Afghanistan and Iraq, that's, that's a whole other rabbit hole. I mean, why were we really over there? We were looking for weapons of mass destruction. Why do we go to Iraq first? Why wasn't yeah. Osama the first, you know, you can what if it to, to death, but... I don't think we even that even came across our minds that like this is this is just new me thinking that like when I was right, 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 18 right. 19 I don't give a fuck what conspiracy is going on dude we're rocking with them right we're going out there to help our boys dude straight up yeah we weren't thinking of anything else no that's that's how it was portrayed but I there's a picture that goes around it says we were kids when they took the towers and we're, we're men now or something and it's guys damn that hit you a little bit oh it hits me I see it every year it comes back it's like a memory that's true and it shows a picture of the plane hit the towers, and then a picture of these guys all squatted up, ready to hit the fucking streets. What do you think about it? <clears throat> you happy you went over there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people knock on that we got nothing accomplished, or, you know, nothing really happened with us going The mindset over there. that I was in at that time is different than the mindset I'm in now, and... That's what I meant by what I just said. Yeah, completely. Yeah, I mean the mindset of you know I was thirteen when they hit the towers and eighteen when we left. Eighteen when I left. Man. Eighteen. And, like, we had just graduated, and then we were like, and and keep in mind like from the that day on, all that was ever covered on the media was the the war. In terrorism, Iraq. Terror, terror, terrorism, the war in Iraq. So that gets embedded in you, dude. Like you know? they they make it seem like we're doing. We're God's fighting the good fight, there, yeah. you know, and, and us as kids are very impressionable. Really, really got to pay attention to how the media spin shit, because that's all I remember at that time. Just, we were getting attacked by terrorism. This guy, this guy, and this guy, suicide bombings, you know. We had, I remember having terror levels. Hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, having terror orange levels? and orange. blue and yellow. That was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like the, the dryness levels, if you're going to have a yeah. brush fire. Yeah. Terror they, levels. They used to have that, dude. And... Oh, oh, it's orange today. Oh, Come no. Come on. What happens if it gets to red? You know, a lot Those of things like a lot time, of things though. didn't make sense back then. It didn't matter, man. We were just riding for our guys. And I was like, as a kid, you were, you're so... But I get defensive when people bring it up now. You know what I'm saying? Because they throw, they throw stuff like that up, like what were you over there for? And I kind of feel that way, you know what I mean? But it doesn't matter. That shouldn't matter. Like we, oh, It that, doesn't matter to me. It won't, dude. Guys like us were over there, and they were dying, man. That's. Yeah. I just thought of someone attacking us, really. Really, yeah. So did I. I thought somebody coming out of our turf, coming out of our fucking area, and and just. I hope you cool. guys would do the same thing if we were getting attacked or something like. Just try to at least fight back somehow. I mean, that's that's really all you think about. I felt like I had to do my part. Yeah, of I course. Felt like, like that, you know, the guys that that went over there right away, they did their part. Yeah. You know the unit that swapped them out. You live in a great. Part. You live in a great country. Like you put in a little bit, pay your taxes yeah. a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean. That's how I looked at it. Yeah. Not what this country can do for you. What's what you can, can do, do for this country. country. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's words like that are like shuns nowadays. We'll probably be fucking demonetized because we said a, a Ronald Reagan. Or that'll throat. that'll well, be uh, some form of sexism or yeah. against the gender or you're gay because you didn't like Vietnam. Some, some bullshit. Like we were that. just I was just talking about that earlier today. We have like this weird Afghan Iraq guys have this weird like relationship with Vietnam guys because <clears throat> we were in total different climates, but. If you ever really get to talking to one, like you assimilate on some similar things of just suffering in combat, if you will. You know what I mean? Well, I think the the uh, after effects are the same. True. You know. I mean, uh, Stevie was talking about that a little bit. Uh, lines. Yeah. Uh, he was agreeing with our, I don't know if you will, our breakdown of PTSD through the episodes, mm. if we have at all. I, don't, I can't tell if we have at all with PTSD. PTSD is a fucking weird thing, man, because... It's weird for me to think about it, because it's, it's not... Like, I'm not a doctor, so... I'm not used to thinking something's wrong with me, though. No, neither am I. But I don't... I actually don't look that much further into it. Like, I... I talk to you about it, and mm. I feel like... All right, if he doesn't think I'm crazy, I'm probably all right. Yeah, I guess I'm all right, but I'm a terrible gauge of crazy, bro. Oh, <laughs> that's why I keep you around. Oh, you know? <laughs> So but, uh, I, I I try to break it down that way, but I, I feel like uh, yeah, that that's the same for everybody, dude. Whether you're in Vietnam, Desert Storm, Iraq, OEF, fucking Korea, yeah, or if you're a member of the IRA, or you know whatever. Irish Defense Forces. Sorry, not the IRA. Come on. I don't know what IRA is like. The bad guys, I think. But it's just good to hear stuff like that, man. Because I mean, I need to hear people are liking us. I need to hear that something we're saying is hitting some guys. I mean, like. That, I'm glad I could entertain that guy for fucking five, six hours, whatever it was that he watched those videos. Still, I know if I was watching a podcast and I had that person, like, appreciate me at all, I'd be like, yeah, my dudes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm doing my shitty job. Right, you know I mean? right, right. <laughs> he probably works in the fucking whiskey facility. That'd be awesome. Bottling shit up. Whatever this is is absolutely delicious. So I mean, this is a great new gauge of whiskey for me. What was fifteen years ago? What do you mean? Oh, it was age fifteen. You're saying? Yeah. So what year was it put in the bottle? If it's twenty twenty, what are we now? Twenty two thousand five or no two thousand seven? Twenty two minus fifteen seven. Two thousand seven. Right? No, that's right, dude. We're in 2022. Yeah. Come on, I'm right. 22 minus... You need me to do this? It's embarrassing. I ain't, I ain't scared. Yeah. Yeah, 2007, like I said. <laughs> so that bottle's been aged this since... This is military... Math. <laughs> <laughs> and do, my, I remember right when I got out of boot camp... We, we're just new in our MOS school, and we're at MOS schools, and I'm, of course I'm calling Mike, like, dude, how are you doing, bro? Because we just got out of boot camp. We were both mentally fucked up, dude, yeah. at that point. Brainwashed. We had just got off uh, leave at home. That was a fucking shit show, that dude. Fucking ten day bend. Oh my god. Do you remember coming to those hotel parties? Oh, I sure do. Uh, anyways, so we get back from. Boot camp, or yeah, boot camp leave, and we go to your MOS school. Mike tells me he's going to military intelligence in Virginia Beach. So you know he's going to a. I, how was uh, Virginia Beach? Uh, it was a naval base, which I will say the Navy bases are very nice. The barracks were like having my own condo. Really, it was like a it was like a apartment type. Deal? Yeah, it felt. I had another roommate who had his own bedroom. So there was two guys. Two guys, two bedrooms. We shared a kitchenette, dining room. Oh, you had a kitchenette. Oh, they took care of you. Yeah, fuckers. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So College I, dorm, if you will. Esk. Esk. Um, yeah, I got sent to Intel school. Um, bad move. <laughs> Come to find out, wasn't so intelligent. Mike made three weeks. <laughs> Did you was, make three weeks? And it was only one week of classroom. <laughs> Two weeks was the transfer portal. Oh no! So, uh, what happened? What, what can dude, you? So, you yeah. never really told me what exactly happened. What what couldn't you do, and like what, what well, did you fail? <laughs> you left that out. It wasn't so much what I couldn't do; it was uh, what I just 
Well, I just assumed Mike would bomb that, dude. Fuck ne- you, he never, dude. He never told me what he actually didn't fucking so wasn't dude, able to do. So you have to do, like, you do a lot of, you get a top secret clearance, which I got some fucking hour. I got a top secret clearance in the military. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I get that, and then they have you, like, you have to go, you have to classify these files. So you got to read these files and tell me if it's classified or unclassified or or private documents like there's there's different levels they need to see that you can acknowledge it bro i can't i can't work microsoft word and they (laughs) these people thought i was gonna run like a spreadsheet oh they had you doing shit like that but well yeah you'd read these these, computer shit though it was all computer shit you have to pass the computer you serious yeah yeah you have to pass the computer shit level and then you get to the person level Really? Intel. Like then you then they teach you how to interrogate people. So they need you cyber. But you gotta pass the computer section first. That ain't happening. No, no same no, here. No, 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 no. If you want me to tell you if Hoogie Boogie over here is lying about putting that shit in the ground, I can do that. But I'm out on the spreadsheet. Yeah, man. serious, I'm the same way, dude. So I I had taken a couple of tests and uh if you're anything like me when you're in high school you take the test and you pass it in. Sometimes the teacher comes back over and says, "Yeah, Mike, you might want to check that one more time." <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, all right. Oh, oh you circled these ones. Oh, that's probably wrong. Yeah, twenty-five percent. It's this one. Come to find out, they don't do that in the military. Oh, yeah, they don't take care of you. And uh, you know, you can't cheat off the guy next to you. Cause dude, honestly, got... like I'm a, I hate to say this, dude. I'm the same way with tests with Mike, but I will find a way to cheat. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna. St- I'm gonna tuck that on. I'm an avid person. Like I will cheat on piss tests, and I'll cheat on my tests, my normal tests. Somehow I'll put it. I put it on my bottle. I put it on my can. I've actually written it on my hand. You can actually, if you don't sweat, you can actually write. Oh, fucked. I'm fucked. Yeah, you're. I don't know how you're doing. No good. But I found. I'm an. I've a. I'm a very good cheater. On things like that, I know it's a scumbag attribute, <laughs> but got you through high school. Yeah, it did. Really yeah. did. So uh, I had to wrap it up, uh, wrap it up at Intel school. <laughs> and, uh, How'd they bring it? Bring, did like an officer come to you like, hey? <laughs> well, you no. Know, Time the, to sit in the special room. The platoon sergeant <laughs> came to me after I had, I had, because you have to take a quiz three times a week. You have to maintain, really? it, yeah, you have to maintain an average of over Jesus like an Christ. eighty-five. I mean, I was swinging in the, in the thirties. Like back to back on the quizzes, and that uh, it was a female staff sergeant who came over, and she's like. You know, uh, Mike, uh, you know, uh, you lollipop? <laughs> PFC Arbogast, uh, maybe, maybe you should be looking into something else. <laughs> and I was like, How would you be thinking about doing something else from there? Right, yeah. So I got reclassed, and they sent me to uh, engineer school. Learned how to do explosives, breaching, demolition. Right up your alley. Fucking perfect. Blow some shit up. Yeah, taught me how to use a chainsaw, taught me how to build a bridge. I'm happy that whatever you did allowed you to link up with me on random times like you did. Dude, you're killing me, Dre. Because I'm trying to talk to you. I told you I'd call you. I know. Let me get to my car. I just put my son in uh, class. I take kids, bro. Don't, don't with the grown-ass man shit. I'll tell everybody who you're talking to. So I'm talking to uh, my doc uh, from Afghanistan right now. His name is Dre. And he's from California. Haul at me when you can. No, I'm right here. I'm ready. I'm right now. All right. So I'm going to introduce you to Mike real quick. Dre, this is my buddy Arbo. What? <laughs> so what are you calling? Bro, you got you to gotta drop what you thought he looked like at first for me. <laughs> what do you think I look like? He likes <laughs> thought you looked like Ted What? <laughs> He thought I looked like Ted Cruz. <laughs> He's like, it's the you way know, he cuts his beard, bro. You know, he needs to bring it down a little further. You, do that, you can do that light, the light, you know, like some people might go longer, but you do the higher up one, and Ted Cruz does the higher up beard trim. <laughs> Dude, I'm so, I'm so glad you called me Ted Cruz and not Chris Christie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have been a kick in the fucking balls. Oh hell no! You know, like Chris Christie. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so talk to us real quick, bro. Put him over here so you can hit the mic. Second life, dude, you know what I'm saying? Got multiple projects, multiple things going on. That's just how I function. You know, the the military taught us how to be a certain way, and honestly, I ain't changed out of that gear. It's just been in different things. So how how was it? How was it like? Tell me how how long it took you to like 
when you got out of the military to like snap out of it and get like into the hustling mindset that you're in right now because I know for me I'm still kind of like readjusting still dude how how did you just instantly take that and run with it it wasn't instantly that's for fucking damn sure um you know first of all you know my uh hashtag product of the government Dang. my uh transition out the military was held i held hands basically with the government right i got medically retired they walked me over basically to the va made sure all my paperwork was good I didn't miss a paycheck. I had a caseworker who was managing my case, and she was, like, helping me figure out the uh, path, like, what programs I, 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 I could get help from or whatever the case was, you know. And so um, I had a ton of help, like, a ton of help. And so even with all that help, it still took me a while, bro. I feel like you asked the right questions, though. Like, you're one of those motherfuckers that does his research, so you know the right questions to ask to get you the help that you need. I feel like that would be a help to a lot of veterans. There's a reason why the corpsmen have to go to a longer school than the Marines. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> there he goes, dude. <laughs> we were supposed to be the smart ones, although I did get a DUI, which they know no as a corpsman. And that's a big ass deal with that. Do you hey do you remember do you remember the day that you met me? Cause uh, cause you flexed on me a little bit, dude. I remember like dabbing you up a little bit and you definitely flexed on me a little bit, dude. Like you were like, Yeah, you're big, but I I'm bigger. Well, it was a match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> he walks up to me, like he looks me up and down, he's like, Alright, he works out. But I can lift more than him. Yeah, we used to always have competition right? all the time. That's what, that's what Dre is like a natural. He has like a huge lower body, and he was like a running back slash fullback. Yeah, like he they would give him the ball to just plow people over, but still run. Marshawn Lynch, strong man. motherfucker, dude. Yeah, yeah. And literally, I've never seen someone go into a club, and literally anyone that looks at him, dude, just eat him alive. <laughs> I've never. The problem with him is. That's, that's a lot of my old. School. Yeah, that's his old life, but the pro. You know, that the thing that kind of scares me a little bit about you, Dre? I've never seen someone, like, get the better of you. And I always see that with someone, and I've never seen someone body you up, dude. Ever. <laughs> I gotta give that to you. Well, now, if somebody wants to catch the fight now, I got a bum knee, so you could probably give me, but I guarantee you intellectually, because that's where oh, I've been in the goes. training here room since I got out of the military, you would never give me intellectually, because I try to get myself. So that when I come up in a situation, I can't get God because I've already tried to get myself before that. I hear you preach. Staying ready. So where are you at with getting your own thing going, dude? You said you were going to try to, I don't know. I, the way you're talking, I can tell you're like at least excited about something. I mean, bro, honestly, I'm just excited about life in general. You know, I, I, um, I've had a ton of shit that's happened to me in my life that I've continually uh, overcame. You know, one of the biggest ones was the whole military uh, getting out and just having to deal with all of that shit. And um, dude, don't you have to get like you have to get like really you have to get really real with yourself, huh? Just like the last conversation, the last conversation me and you had, dude, like you got really real with yourself and I had to like look at myself and be like, oh shit, I'm doing this, I'm not doing this, you know what I mean? 100%, dude, if not, I mean, unless you have somebody in your life doing that for you, which, you know, I'm not on social media, I'm on Twitter, but it's an anonymous account and I'm, you know, I don't really talk to very many people, but um, unless you have someone else in your life that's helping you with that, which can even be weird sometimes when someone's constantly critiquing you, you know, you don't even want that all the time, but you know, you got to do it yourself. And Definitely. I got three kids, you know, and I got two boys. So for me, I constantly am aware that my two boys are watching me be a man. Like just the other day, um, I woke up, the kids had done what they needed to do in the morning, you know, their responsibilities. And uh, one of my sons was stuck on the Xbox. He's like, Dad, I can't figure out this battery or whatever. And I had told him, I was, you know, I've been trying to teach them to do stuff on their own. And I kind of got upset, and, you know, I, I don't scream or nothing like that, but I definitely am louder than the mom in the house. You're so, firm to a way. Yeah, I hear you. I am 100% firm, bro. Gotta be. Gotta be. It's me. And honestly, like, a couple af a couple hours after, though, I went to my sons, and I was like, yo, you know what? I was like, um, I was like, I want to apologize to you guys. You know, my son is sick, and my other son's five. I was like, I want to apologize to you guys because, you know, I could have communicated that message earlier a lot better than I did. What you have to realize is I'm a human and I'm constantly... Dre, you don't, you don't even have to do that, bro. You said what? You don't even have to do that. No, 
but I'm just saying, like, that's just that's the mindset, you know, that I'm even trying to show my kids in, in real life where, like, and I saw my, my oldest son's reaction, bro. When I apologized to him, and I was like, yo, my bad, I really I apologize, and I'm going to do better. And uh, he, like, kind of talked like a little smirk smile, but, <laughs> like, not a cocky one, but it was, like, a good one, like, That's where he, generation. like, recognized that he never seen that side of his dad, where I kind of came down and was like, hey, man, I just messed up, you know, because I'm usually telling him he's messing up stuff, right? I hear you. Like, you know, don't do this, son, or do that, son. That's got to be way. cool for him to realize, like, dad's a human. You know, dad makes I mistakes every once in a while. Bro, I hope you realize. That's what you're trying you to know, get him to pull out of it. I am. Because we all need to realize that, bro. And, and that helps you also with the different projects in your life. Like, I've started a group of projects. One of the first ones I started, him before I, I put everything I had into it, a couple thousand dollars, all my time and effort. I got it really big. And I was going to ask you, what happened with that? The, when I, when I, you know, well, it was a Christian brand at first, right? Ah, so, uh, that's why. Uh, I was going through seminary, and I learned so much that I ended up having to change a lot of my beliefs. Things that I didn't know before I had already formed these beliefs. And so uh, I had to change religious. a lot of things I believed. So one of the things I didn't like, you know, I wasn't okay with calling God or the mystery of creation, whatever you want to, uh, language you want to use. That's a deep, mystery. that's a deep motherfucking like, topic, dude. It, it is, bro. This is just how I roll. But I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't trying to keep it a hymn because the thing I had started was a hymn before I, like God before myself. I hear you. And the hymn part of the of God, I was like, I can't really rap that, you know. So I just had to, I had to figure out um, a new thing. But my point of bringing this up was, you know, that was almost, that was like a failure in a sense. I had a lot of success, but I just dropped it. And if I didn't already know that, you know, that happens in life, you're going to, you're going to have messes up and you're going to have things that don't go right. And uh, it's okay. That's part of the process. So I had already known that. So it didn't slow me down. You know, now we've created a couple other businesses and one of them is a multi-million dollar business. And I just never let myself... Yo, shout that, hey, shout out, shout out that real quick. Yeah, Break Justice Kids, go BJKC.US. If you got any kids, check us out. We're an eco-friendly baby product company, 100% renewable energy. Um, you know, say, you cool. got to say that a little slower, dude. Say Brave Justice Kids. What is it? Uh, my bad. It's Brave Justice Kids, Co. And then uh, the website's BJKC, Bravo, Juliet, Kilo, uh bjkccharlie.us so slow down real quick tell me tell me what you what you what's your bread maker what do you what do you make we make products for kids underneath the ages of 12 okay but our products are one eco-friendly everything we produce is uh, okay for the environment and for two all of our production is made with renewable energy so wind That's and cool. solar power are manufacturers power uh production for the electricity to make our items no shit and we we created a uh, safety system i patented an idea called safely made kids where um we basically verify and um make sure that baby products that you're buying are safe so a company you might buy a bowl or a spoon from somebody but how do you know they're actually safe you're just trusting the company, and really, you're just trusting the government. So we've made a system, and we're, we're working on it right now. It's just in our own company's phase, but we'll, we'll extend it to other companies sooner or later. But uh, it basically tracks and verifies the safety data for the consumer so that the parent knows that the stuff they bought has at least been looked upon by other eyes. You know, this organization safety He's upsetting made. a lot of people by doing that. Because no, no one does that. You motherfuckers no should have been doing it right first, bitch. These are kids. So he's kind of he's kind of like he's kind of like trailblazing by doing that. Oh, by all these yeah. other brands that are putting that shit out, they're not testing their products. You know, they're not. There's shipping. no like FDA. No, because, because the government no. doesn't come. The government doesn't come to you and make you test your stuff. Or no when you get it through customs, if you're importing it, they don't put it in a laboratory. You actually certify yourself as mm -hmm. the business. Like when I found out about. How this shit is ran i was like this is crazy though yeah. this is literally like free for all wild wild west i mean what do you really expect from free market capitalism but it's it's a, a place that like anybody could go get baby products from anywhere made it doesn't matter what country you don't even have to get them tested go go make a nice little instagram store make, make a nice little website and promote it and Great. parents are not of the mindset to ask like is this actually safe and where can you prove it so on our website, we have our our laboratory reports on the website that you can actually go and look for yourself to see the chemistry of everything that's broken down by the laboratory to show you what's in the product. Bro, you've had to have you, you had to have had some negative feedback from that. Like someone's hated on you for that already. 
Not yet, because we haven't rolled it out to everybody yet. So we've only been around for three years. We just had instant success with a couple of our ideas. So we really haven't reached the level of this next level. Like, even, like, doing a couple million dollars in sales. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Even doing... Even doing, like, a couple million in sales isn't that big, honestly. And so we're not even really there to, like, make waves. But like we don't even have a lot of uh, mentionings on the internet. We're just really on Amazon, so you really have to get on the real internet. You can't just be on. The why you been Why like, you been holding back so much on that, dude? Like, shoot the trigger with it. It's a It's a money thing, bro. It's a time thing, you know. Like he's been ready to do it. Slowly but surely, that's something he's I've like, learned. Uh, my buddy Sean, you know, maybe one day you can get my buddy Sean on here. You know, Sean. You know, I'd love that. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll have to make that link. But he told me one time, and I've always took it to heart. Everything can be accomplished it's just steps and so i keep it in mind no matter how far away the target you know the mission is we just have to have steps to get there so ultimately i know where we would like to be i see the vision but it's these little steps that uh you have to keep taking and sometimes they're a bigger step than the other but you know it's like little little wins little no, wins, little wins that people success so that, that's where we're trying to go i hear you uh, hey it makes it, it i'm happy that you've uh stayed in contact with sean like that because as you know, when you get out, you have, like, a select crew of guys that you keep contact with. And Sean was definitely that person in your life. I mean, when when did you... How how long before you met me did you meet Sean? I met Sean, actually, in 09, speaking of that DUI. So, uh, <laughs> my first appointment... Which, my first appointment was rough, bro. We got a fucking, uh... We got a presidential union citation from Obama for taking so many casualties. I think we had, like, 181 casualties yeah. in six months. I think it was probably, like... 17 or 19 KIA. Um, we we had, you know, we didn't even KIA's have power. Like, it was 09, you know what I'm saying? Like, we were in cops and shit. And we didn't have... Uh, hey, was there, was there a dock... Wait, wait, hey, was there a dock above... Was there a dock above you on that deployment? Or was it, like, you and one of the person... Oh, no, there was. Yeah, I was a boot. Okay, boo. gotcha. Nah, I was a boot, bro. I, I was a boot, boot. The reason why there really wasn't a dock on our second one with you was because... That's why I was asking. ...was because we were, like, a specialized yeah, team. Yeah, we were. But you know, I was in the line. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just know. saying. I know, as like the head Fire doc, team. you have to you have to verify on all on all kills, pretty much on everything that is like a event where there's a life taken. Oh yeah, for sure, definitely. I mean, as a younger corpsman, you know, you're the one doing the fucking paperwork for that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but that's nah, real I, shit right I there. Wasn't one of, I was just I was a regular corpsman, but. Um, are we mentioning 09? We're talk oh, yeah, Fushan. Yeah, so we had a tough-ass deployment. Came back literally. So, you know, if you know anything about my uh, life, I have, like, a horrible uh, family history and just a bunch of toxic shit. Yep. Anyways, uh, got off the plane. You know, everybody's family's there. Me and a couple of my other boys. We didn't have any family. So we just basically, like, walked by everybody. And then we was like, man, let's go out tonight. So we rented a car. I know that hurts. I know that hurts. I've done that before. Like the you know what I'm saying? Had a couple of drinks. We got off the plane from Afghanistan. It was a good party. Had two drinks. I was tired as fuck from that White flight. Got in my car to get to the hotel room. Went left <laughs> on a, a one way on the red light. Like a right on red, but a left on red. Which usually you can do. You know, some states you could do it. I don't know if Hawaii wasn't one of the It states. wasn't. <laughs> I got pulled over. Sure enough, these motherfuckers are out for you too. Hawaii's a little different, bro. You know, support the troops. Nah, they ain't feeling that. They they want you out, so they already knew. They're like, oh wow, you just got back. You were too. I'm like, what the fuck? Y'all have it out for me? Like they probably knew where we were when we were. They know they just got back. These wild boys, you know, trying to be fucking our women and shit. So they uh. Got me, you know, got pulled over, had a DUI. <laughs> I'm in jail that night, literally. <laughs> that night, we got, my staff sergeant gets a call, and it's fucking like, I don't even know what time. <laughs> um, and imagine my staff sergeant, I'm a boot ass E3 corpsman. And it's like, yo, you know, uh, your corpsman's in jail, wacky key. He's like, fucking, I'll get him tomorrow. So they left me there all night. <laughs> <laughs> They give me like these three mini donuts and I get in there with like four dudes and I was like, look, as soon as they shut the door, I was like, look, I'll give you guys these donuts, but if you touch me, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> and the police officer guy was like, actually, we're going to move into another uh, place. He's like, just got back. So, you know what I'm saying? Mind him. Anyways, I was on restriction. Two, three got to go on leave. You know, we just got back and I didn't get to go on leave. 
And I was like, fuck it, bro. I was like, fuck everything in the world. I didn't give a fuck. Like, I had, you know, lost a couple of close to my buddies. Like, just a bunch of traumatizing shit that there. first appointment. And there was no mental health system set up. I remember a couple of months after this, I went to go make a mental health appointment. I sat down, made the appointment, and I was just, I started crying while I was making the appointment. And then I just got up and left. And nobody ever checked on me <laughs> or nothing. I deployed like six months later. What the fuck? Good thing I wouldn't have wanted to get out of that shit anyways. But like the system wasn't set up because nowadays we met. You know, you That's back, key. Like, dude. Saying, like, you break down system and, wasn't set. Hold on, slow down. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're slow. telling you back off the mic. Slow down, slow down. System wasn't set up. Not bad. Jeez, Dre, you can get going, dude. It wasn't charged at all. Or recording at all. No, no, you were, you've been recording the whole time. I'm just saying. Oh. I want to talk about system wasn't set up. So, guys like us that got back, there was nothing for it. They didn't tell you what PTSD was. They didn't tell you what you need to do to get out, like, someone on it a... It had just started. My first deployment in 09, it had really just started with deployment health assessments. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, you would get back and you had to take a health assessment when you got back. And it asked you, like, those dumbass fucking questions. Like, are you yeah. trying to hurt people? <laughs> yeah. Do you have a bad dream? Yeah. Are you... <laughs> <laughs> Do you own guns? Uh, I just did that today. It really started like in the beginning. Yep. The post-deployment health assessment, and then there was like a reassessment. So they started like adding to this. But yeah, whenever we were first in, it was just kind of like there wasn't really there. Like, I mean, they had like that little video that you watched before you had to leave Leatherneck on some shit. Like, hey, you're about to go back into the civilian world. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, fuck. Like, I would just rather stay here, to be honest, that <laughs> like, Oh. So they like they put you on on that kind of mindset, but yeah, they really didn't, you know. And honestly, dude, at that time, like I wasn't even answering those questions honestly. I was like, "Fuck facts, this!" Like I'm facts. not trying. I knew what was going on. I'm a quorum anyway, so I knew they were trying to, you know, get get the wackos out. And I'm not trying to. I'm trying. I gotta go right back. Like we just lost some boys too. Facts. Like I'm not trying to go back in oh, nine months. I love like, when he gets back, Like you know, like that that mindset of wanting to get taken care of wasn't even there. So I think that's why the system in itself as well wasn't supporting that because yep. a lot of us war fighters weren't even trying to get help. Seriously. That. We didn't know shit about that, bro. That that was that was weak shit to us, dude. It was it's also a young thing though too, bro. When you're young, you're not really thinking about your health and shit. You're just thinking about like the moment. Yeah, I hear you. When you, when you, when you, I hear you. Especially when you start kids, you start thinking about this and you're like, Well, hold up, man, like I was by those burn pits fucking constantly, you know, three deployments in. I was like, maybe that's why I'm, some of my body parts are fucked up or whatever. You know, nice. like, you do start thinking about these things in, in uh, more detail. Or you start thinking about your mental health or your friend's mental health. Like, oh, maybe I should reach out to my boy or something. So it's really like a younger thing. And the way we train, bro, like, cats don't get it. I try to that's tell cats, fact. I'm like, yo, when you see somebody on the base in the Marine Corps, you don't say fucking hi. No. If you do that shit, it ain't good morning. It's you walk by them, you look them in the eyes like a grown ass motherfucking man, and you say kill, and they look back at you and say kill, and you keep walking, and that's how it works. You don't fucking break down. You're not allowed to not be tough. You are not allowed to even go to sick call. Your fucking leg did hurt. Fucking put some new socks on. Get some water. We're not built like that. We're different. So that's, that's what it is, right there. Mindset, right there. Until dude. I got to the Navy side when I was going to rehabilitation at the Balboa Hospital, that they were all kind and nice. And it was like wearing on me. I could just feel it. It was like, God damn it. People are so nice. Like maybe I should get checked out. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm a little fucked up. <laughs> maybe I should get checked out. <laughs> no, for sure, bro. That's literally how it is. So it's like. It's the environment, you know, it's it's the it's the culture as well, because the culture is a little different now. The culture now is more willing to talk about mental health and shit, you know, the podcast right here. But the culture when we were there, you know, 09, 2010, uh, that time frame, bro, it was, it wasn't there. Like, we was in real war. Can you can you pause for a second? Yeah. Isn't shit like that looked at, like, just, just absolutely petty? If you talk about what you went through in war, it's like, who are you, bro? You, you can't take this shit? That's like that's why like cameras and shit weren't allowed. If you took pictures or you looked you took videos over there, it was like looked at as weak. It was looked at like, oh, you can't just you can't take this shit and shut your mouth. That's just how it was, dude. It was a different breed. Let's let's bump that Dre, I'm not I'm gonna I'm gonna bump you back for a minute here. Two thousand nine, you come off that deployment, you're in the mental health facility because you sought treatment on your own. Nobody forced you to go there. And you you have a breakdown and 
and leave and you leave because you know you know not to put certain answers on that paperwork because you won't get sent back and you want it to go back that's a fucking mindset that's you hit the nail on the head with that kind of mindset oh 100 and i'm I, and i'm on the other side of the spectrum where i'm supposed to be the smarter one i know the risk i know blah 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 right so I'm right aware of that the marines are not so even that shows you like the spectrum like hold up the one that had the most information the one that's dealing with this the most like you work hand in hand with the mental health fucking people you're not even feeling like that like you feel like you got to go right back that's, to it's like that's... yeah bro like my boys got killed over there. What the fuck you think I'm going to do? You think like, I want to chill you know, here, dude? Yeah, you think I don't fucking sleep every night thinking about that? Remembering the smells, the sights, the sounds? Like, what the fuck cats think this Bro, shit Bro, no, no one understands that anymore, Dre. It's not a thing. It, it, yeah, bro, well... We'll fucking be the ones us. they could uh, listen to because... You know, I mean, who knows? Maybe there'll be more wars, but we got base over in Syria. You know what I'm saying? Our our country's very on. Hey, red. yo, on the Dre, yo, Dre, on the low. I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for them to be like, yo, we need some guys that went to Afghanistan to be like our staff NCOs. We need you to train some guys. You know, they've never seen combat. Just sh you know, show them the ropes a little bit. Hopefully, they give us a little bit of a warning because I gotta hit a diet. Yo, how pumped, dude? Tell me you're not like a little chubby for that. Honestly, I would have been before I had my kids, bro. But now that I have my kids, I don't ever want to participate in that. I would like us as human beings to use other ways to solve problems than violence. Especially when the violence gets people millions of millions of millions of dollars. Boeing, Halliburton, Raytheon, shout out to all you motherfuckers. Taking all the government money, the public money, turn private companies for these military weapons, the drones, the MREs, everything. <laughs> Is our economy is built off of our our government needing the material to make the military run, and so I would hope we can get to a mindset that we can try to use our resources differently and start partnering up with more countries rather than going to war and just not doing shady shit, bro. Like I'm tired of being part of a country that the rest of the world looks at like y'all are the shady ones. Like y'all over here talking about you over here so for terrorism, true. but it's like y'all are really the terrorists if we're being real. Yeah, like, dude. If you want, if you want to be real about America, dude, it's like a bunch of motherfuckers doing something shady that are like, "Yo, we didn't do that." But we, but we could change it, especially us as the alphas, bro. As, as, as us as the, you know, the generation that's now going to be in the position of managerial and supervisor and business owners and politicians. Like this is our age, older thirties, you know, where we get the gray beards and shit and the gray hair, and you know, it's up to us to really take this direction of the country in a different place. Like, bro, we got like forty, fifty billion dollars going to Ukraine. Okay, hold up. How that was so that ridiculous. Oh, something, something. How much is going for peace, though? Because I, right. I get you guys. Thank none you. of it. None of it. None of it. It's going to continue the fighting so swords can hit swords and sparks can keep flying. Like, we don't need that, bro. Russia, the Russian innocent people don't need that. The Ukrainian innocent people don't need that. Some of these soldiers that I've been reading about that be just retreating in the most fucking uh, shameful ways. Like, nobody needs this, bro. You got people in Ukraine calling people in Russia saying, like, yo, we killed your family. We killed your son because it's a different world over there. It's like, yes. yo, we don't need that as human beings, bro. We need to look back and say that's how they used to do it in the old days. That's common sense, Dre. No that's common sense. That doesn't. That's not alive right now. It blows my mind that people just be putting the fucking Ukrainian flag in their picture, like they have no knowledge about it or who's behind it or <laughs> exactly. Like, where's this money? Like, did we not learn from Afghanistan and Iraq? No, nope, no. Nope. How much money we wasted? What about over here? Are we tracking the money? We're giving these money. Are we tracking it actually? Do you there's have there's never there's never checks and balances, bro. Everyone always bitches about it, but they never put a situation where there's no someone in the checks and balances department where there's no biased. Or there's no. But this is the real problem, bro. Is the system right now is only so if you if you look if, you, if we take the demographics that vote, it's like forty eight percent of the population didn't vote. Okay, so if you take only fifty two percent of people who are voting, and not everybody voting is like that super plugged in, let alone aware of what's going on, it's not a big amount of the population if you actually think about it. That's making our system is going like what's driving it you know the the agendas or whatever that our system has it's not that many people it's just people that are actually participating in the system and that's where us as the older generation us as the alphas the good guys we need to participate in these systems and start making the directions go different start making the awareness you know like 
uh, this podcast is a great way to start making the awareness where it's like, you know, we went to war, bro. That's not what we want to do. Don't listen to Tulsi Gabbard. You know what I'm saying? Like, they shut her out quick because she started saying, like, yo, I've been in Iraq. I'm a combat vet. We don't need to do that. We need to do other stuff. Nah, 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 nah. We need to keep pumping that money. It's like $800 billion a year. How much How much jobs would we lose if Raytheon didn't have all those billions? How much jobs would we lose if uh, Halliburton wouldn't be able to make drones so we can drop bombs on Facts. people? You see, like, we've built our economy even off this. Jeez, and and, and off not to mention, this. if you even mention this, it's you're raw, usually, like, for most of us, we are, but... Usually you mentioned this, you're anti-American. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not actually anti-American. This is actually helpful for us. It's, but it's just the way our culture is. So we need to start participating and, and making this go in a different direction that we want it to. Need a leader, ultimately, though. Facts, bro. We got them. They could just, you know, most of them are still healing up their motherfucking wounds, bro. Even though I've had a lot of success, I'm still not ready to have a social media. And Stop saying that, Dre, right, dude. Like, I, I would listen to I'm you. Not, bro. I'm not, because I'll fucking argue with you the whole time. He is an arguer. He's one of those dudes that won't let it go. I but, won't. Like, you and know, after 15, it's like, they're like, all right, fuck it. Let's just have a drink. So you can't do for that. For me, it's like after 15 seconds. Dude, I'm, I'm such the opposite. And nothing dude, against you. Dre, do you remember how long you argued with Margarita when I brought her over? Probably not. And I was it's... super toxic. And I'm not that toxic anymore. All night, dude. They went all night about religion, dude. And I was just like in the middle, like, yeah, you're both right, like just couldn't happen dude yeah yeah but see a lot of that too like i wake up and i'm like i feel like i'm a million miles an hour i have multiple thoughts a day that i'm gonna die so like if you could imagine what it feels like inside my body it's like super revved up so even the way i've been talking you're like slow down it's like dude you're just getting an inside view of what's going on inside of here no because you get when, when you really believe in shit you get going dude for sure but well, you know, it's, it's, just, it's a transition you know, and I'm, I'm still healing you know it's been a while but i'm still healing and that's why I think a lot of our leaders are still healing, bro. Fuck yeah, man. That's that's a the, the, I I don't think that that Dre speaks too fast. I think he speaks with passion. I think he believes in what he says, and and I love it. And I I've, I I agree with what you get what you got going on here. I think it's uh it's imperative for for guys like us to to be able to voice that opinion, or, or be able to voice just that stance in life, like to, like you said, dude, to be the alpha and and. Like this is our generation. This we are going to be those gray haired motherfuckers soon. You know? The worst is when you believe of some believe about something so fully and no one listens though, and no one really hears you. Like that's why yeah. he gets like that because like he wants people to hear him ultimately. Yeah, I mean you stay at it. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes it's just you might be speaking something that's ahead of the times. You know, true. and you know, like for example, when we were talking about caring about the mental health aspect, like I'm not saying to be weak on combat, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Still make sure your shit is, is good to go. Make sure you're sharp on the battlefield. But at the same time, know the effects and know what to do on the back. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, that's an evolution that is even being brought about and we're helping even bring that about. But like, that shit wasn't going about in 09. You you were not going to find no war fighters talking about that shit. No, right, fuck you, no. Bitch. It wasn't known. It wasn't known. It was like looked at as like kind of weak. You were, yeah, you were like the outcast exactly. if you wanted to talk about it. You know, yep, and, weak, and, and like, nobody else wanted to really admit it. It was like, I'm actually going to do the same shit. So you like, you like oh, went yeah, around it know. at any cost. You're like, yo, that never happened. Then you'd have one dude in the platoon who would pipe up, like, who did go to Uganda. And would be like, yo, shut the fuck up. Somebody who did go to mental health and, and seek help, and then all of a sudden that dude was isolated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's Bro, how many too right there. How many, I can't tell you how many times I've though. seen that. Like they just disappear. And you know somebody who's who's like you know I knew some dudes who had done some shit and like they went and sought treatment and for some reason or another they were like the castaways. Yeah, I know. It's just a, it's the culture, bro. Like we we said, it's, it's weakness, but things are changing, and you know that's why I'm glad you guys are on this podcast, and I appreciate that I was able to be on here today. I would definitely like to be on again, and I'll tell Sean maybe him and I could try to get on at the same time. And we'll oh, I'd love that, story. dude. I would love like, that. Stuff, yeah, absolutely, Dre. Let's let's set that up. Cause yeah, I, we'd I'd love, love that. to have you guys back on. I think that I think it's great conversation. Dre, can you stop copping out and just come out here, dude? There's no reason you can't come here for a weekend, dude. Who's got three kids? Well, again, bro, like I said, like... He's going to talk about being a grown-ass man and being like, you know... I know. Yeah, because he it's means tough, it. Bro. One day, though, I promise you I will. It's just, there's so much shit, dude. You know, like, I put my kids in 
activities and then you know i got my own projects on the side and bro I, but i'm saying we drive we drive down to donnerstack that night dude and have like a, a whole thing that'd be cool i'd that'd make cool. a long weekend I mean, out like, of it. I, I, it's definitely doable i just need to schedule it a couple months in front but i think we should definitely uh on the on the offline get together plan something and then even invite some of the members that are listening to yeah, I'm down. with us in person you know We've been we we've been saying that, bro. Like we want the people that like fuck with us to like, like show their flag a little bit, dude. Like show show that you're here with us. Show that you you appreciate what we're talking about. Oh, did we lose him? We might have. If we did, that's unfortunate. I think we did. Yeah. So I now for the for the viewers, I've never met Dre. You you molded him that nicely, dude. Well, no, I can't. He says relate. a bunch of real shit, dude. But, dude, I pick up on every word he says. Like, yeah. the, the man knows what he's talking about. He really does, dude. Like I said, I did, like, two weeks in Intel A lot of people school, don't so like kinda... him, dude. A lot of people, like, when they hear what he says, they're like, yo, you can't say that. I mean it, dude. I've seen a lot of people no, do no, that. No, no, I don't. I'm not, I'm not saying it. Well, no, but the fact that you, pissed. like, you, you fuck with him right away, I can, I appreciate that. Well, I Because he says a lot of, like, raw shit, dude. Like, how it is. That's what's happening. That's, that's, that's how I try yeah. to live my life, dude. There is no gray area with me. And, and and that's why, I like, some people like me, some people don't. And it's because I don't have that... I don't have that gray area. It's, like, it's got to be black and there's white. Usually that, have there, there's usually out. that 10% that isn't talked about. You know, like... Yeah. That stuff in between that, you know, you mutually agree on and you're just okay with. I leave it there. You know? There's no reason to, to, no reason to get revved up over fucking shit that doesn't really affect your day to day yeah. life. So it's like, I, I just, I think he spoke very articulate. So I met Dre on my first deployment when he was coming back from his first. So post DUI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah. he is so like, uh, for for our civilian listeners, when you come back from a deployment, the last. The last, like, two days that you're traveling and shit, all they tell you is don't try to drink the town dry. <laughs> Listen, just take it easy. You haven't had a drink in fucking seven, eight, nine months? Don't drive. <laughs> don't try and drink the place dry. Do not drive tonight. Wherever you're going, make sure you have a drink. They give you this fucking whole speech, <coughs> and it's so that as a staff sergeant, you're not answering that phone call at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the worst part is he must have answered that phone call, like, Oh, Schmuckatelli fucking probably got DUI. The doc? What? <laughs> the last guy he picture to pick something up like that. That's funny, though. But he's a good dude, man. I like that. I like... So that was that was Donna Stagg's doc. Yeah. 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 So if you guys have watched our previous episodes, we went down. I love to... that you just picked that up. Well, yeah. We, uh, we went down to New Jersey to interview Captain Donna Stagg. And this dude, Come Dre, on, dude. who we've been talking fuck? about, that's his, uh... Hold on a second. He's the corpsman who treated him. Can you see oh, me? we're back on. We're back on. He's, he's back on the line. Oh, he's on audio. He's on audio. Audio's fine. We don't need the video. All right, just say, just say what's good, dude. Just give your outro. Happy birthday. Hey, you know I shouted you out earlier. Come on, I remembered it. Yep, thank you, fellas. Appreciate you guys, man. Uh, yo, can we get you... I'll be on, I'll be on with uh, Sean in another time in a more professional setting. With, with can the... Can you give us, like, at least maybe think about coming through? Bro, I want to come through more than you probably think I do. All right, I'll take that. I promise you, I do. And I can make it happen. It's not like a money thing. It's really just a time thing, bro. Right. So, Dre, if we gave you, like, I mean, if we gave you 90 days notice, we gave you three months to heads up that we're going to schedule an episode for this day, we could plan, like, a weekend. Easy, bro. Shit. We might as well, if it's, like, a 90 day, what's up with New Year's? I was, that was my next question. Maybe that's the New Year's episode. Maybe I head to New Jersey for New Year's. The thing is, dude, like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta untie the knot a little bit. You gotta be okay with feeling like, yo, you're with your boys. You're not, you're not a family woman, man for the weekend. Like you're trying to have fun. Come on. For sure, no, one hundred percent, bro. Okay. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, 
All right. Dre, I appreciate your time, brother. It was, it was an honor meeting you, and it was great talking to you. Hey, bro, and I can't wait to meet in person, brother. Appreciate you guys. Simplify. I'll Looking talk to you, brother. Looking forward to it. Simplify. All right. That was good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. He is very uh, intellectual, but he's so deep on things. you got to walk into it. Well, I, oh, I was. I'm sure people that are watching were like, so I was, was just it was, I was trying to take so it all So, keep in mind, Dre would be on every patrol with us. He was a doc. And at the so end, explain that a little bit because people don't know like what a doc. So normally docs don't get involved; they do the bare minimum. Doc is our medic, essentially. Anyone that gets hurt, anyone that gets shot in battle, anyone that gets hurt in the slightest, they get checked out by the doc. And the doc or the medic is provided by the Navy. It's not a Marine Corps job. But ultimately, the Marine Corps is a part of the Navy, Correct. so it's it's a weird relationship. But regardless, we take care of them. Yeah. So, Dre was with us on deployment, and we started vibing instantly. Like, Dre was a guy that worked out, I work out. He's a guy that often, if you go out with him, he's not going to back down from a one-on-one. -on -one. And I respect that in anyone. Anyone that can hold their ground and appreciate who they are as a man, I fuck with you. That's yeah. what it is. It's just a thing beyond uh, between warriors and uh, people in the military that you can respect. You respect the real ones, and Dre was one of them. And uh, Dre, I've never seen someone immerse themselves so much in the Afghan culture and really understand it. you got to understand how much of a threat you are. If you understand what they're talking about a little bit, and you can feel the energy in the room, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You know how to react as a human being. And that's, you got to understand, the team that we were with, we were interacting with Afghan Taliban every week. Mm. Oh, I know. Talking to them in Shuras. Shuras is a time where the elders of the community or the ones with the most money talk with the Marines that are coming in. They're like, yo, what are you looking for? Mm. What are you trying to do here? <laughs> I couldn't hold it any longer. Sorry. Jesus Christ. You can at least call a safety for that <laughs> well, or something, you know. dude. Or... Sorry. <laughs> Fucking artillery. <laughs> no, nah, that's cool. Anyways, Dre was in on every one of those conversations, and for some reason... I was a low Marine at that time, so I'd have to stand on Firewatch on duty. He would come tell me about it. He would stand with me and he would tell me about it. So Dre was always just a real individual that had been, has been in a lot of real situations as a young kid. And as a Marine, looking at that from the outside as the guy that always has to hold the weapon in the dangerous area or hold yeah, down yeah. the dangerous area, yeah. you respect someone that goes through some shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you got to respect the guy that lays security. That holds his ground. But, I mean, I mean, from your perspective, like... Think about this. You get put in a lot of dangerous situations as a Marine. Yeah. When you see someone that gets put in situations like that and holds it down like you do, you're like, oh, you're a real one. You're a real one. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying when I say that? Yeah, you, you shake him out in the first place. You're going to drop this motherfucker if he tries you. Right, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm going to look the other way. That's how it goes. All right, so I have an idea. And I'm going to pitch it to you. I told Nick about this pre-episode. I said, I got something that I'm going to throw at you live. And I think we can get behind this. So I've been trying to sell my pool table. And uh, I threw it up online. I've had a couple of bites, but no, nobody really looking to buy it. Once we move the, or sell the pool table, that you guys can't see it on camera, but over there is like a pool table area. That's going to be gone Straight gonna, couch, yes. chairs on the side. Yes, full mic set up the whole the whole nine. We need that. But I got to get rid of this fucking pool table, and I love it. It's a nice pool table. It's not bad. So, I was talking to Dicky the other day. Oh, here we go. And Dicky goes, "Hey, have you looked?" At oh no, it wasn't Dicky. It was fucking uh, Corey Watson. Shout out to Corey Watson. He was our first old ever Watson. sponsor. Oh, yeah. Watson, old uh, what's the sponsor? Uh, Uncle Donnie's Bear Uncle Soap. Uncle Donnie's Bear Soap. Uncle Donnie's Bear Soap. Com. It's my buddy Corey who goes all over the U.S. and Canada and hunts bears. Hunts bears. Hunts like, yeah, no big hunts deal. big bears. Um, and the bear fat, he takes it, renders it renders down, down, makes it into all natural soap, and sells the bars of soap to wash your body with. And it's it, he's a buddy of mine, but. Um, long story short, when I t told him that we were doing this podcast, he's like, I want to be the first sponsor. And he threw the first 50 bucks in our GoFundMe. And uh, to come back, Dickie said, hey, have you looked at the GoFundMe recently? 
and I said, I've never looked at it. Nick runs that account. And he goes, it's at like 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, great. I said, what do we need for the camera? Because we're, we're trying to buy a new camera. And he said, a new camera's about 1000 bucks. So. What cam is he trying to get, dude? I've been looking at the iMac thing for a buck, buck and a half. Anyways, I don't know what camera. I know the one that we're using right now costs like two grand. And the one to get comparable to it in like a step down what is version. The, what is, is the comparable thing with cameras? Is it memory held or is it quality made? It's uh, accessories that come with it. Like for ours, for our camera, um, our hard lines for the microphones plug right into the side of it. That's a different attachment. That's only that two mics to... though. Correct. There's all different. So if you buy a camera that has access to 15 different attachments, then you could run, we could do vlog, video. Oh, really? We, oh, yeah, there's all different shit. But if you buy a cheap camera, you can only put two attachments on it. Gotcha. So, anyways, here's my, here's my fucking idea. Uh, if the pool table doesn't sell in the next week, as soon as we hit 1000 bucks in the GoFundMe, mm -hmm. we take the pool table to the gun range and we just pump it full of lead. I'm down with it. So if you guys could help us out, and I think we'll vlog that. We'll make it uh, like a, a fucking uh, a day in the life kind of episode. That would be cool. You know, we'll have Dickie follow us with the camera. We'll go to my buddy. We'll go to Jonesy's gun range. Um, we could take the skid steer. We'll put the pool table out there. Fucking line it up. And fill it up. And they'll video us ups or video us fucking shooting it with every gun we own. I'm with it. And I think that'd be a good episode. So, we got to get the GoFundMe to a grand, and the pool table goes to the gun range. Then, yeah. after the pool table goes to the gun range, we have a new fucking studio. It's and now we'll get that you that quality you want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Throw a fucking, throw, throw a couple bucks in that GoFundMe. I promise you that will be the best video we have so far, because I have... Once we bring these up to par, we get the camera at least able to lock in with constant volume. Steady. You're gonna appreciate the content. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. Plus, the I just I'd be excited to have because Dickie will come run the camera for us. True. So we'll just go live to the range. That would be awesome. And we'll fill that fucking beautiful nine foot granite slate pool table with. Uh, it looks strong, dude. <laughs> I tell you, I moved it in here with a kid who, uh, an old buddy of mine, and he's not the biggest fella. He was struggling. It's a slate pool table. It's not light. No, no. But it would look great with like 500 holes in it from ammunition. Facts. Facts. So let's get that GoFundMe to a grand. We'll fucking shoot a video. We'll blow that pool table up. We'll get the room good to go for you too. Like, right. I want to get it so the audio, you can pick up the little things. Like when I want to fix the lighting because we always look so yellow. I've heard lighting. I've heard volume. I've right. heard just ultimate audio. If we can square this up, get it so there's like a couch where we look fine on and... At least the audio doesn't recoil off the walls or you yeah, yeah, airplanes yeah. or, right. you know. I, I couldn't believe the Donner Stag interview, dude. Like, uh, that was the best content we've had, dude. I gotta be honest, man. I, I, I know the audio was tough, but I've read five or six emails that were... I've heard that, too, and I'm glad those people appreciated so happy, it. so happy, dude. Like, they, I just they wanted really... everyone to appreciate it, dude. Because yeah. we talked about some real shit in that, dude. Like, I really want you guys to appreciate that, dude. Like, I mean, that took a lot out of us, man. Like... When, when I first heard that it looked like there was, like, six helicopters in the volume, like, I didn't even hear that when I was there. No. If I heard that, I would have stopped it. Right, like, right, right, right. Well, we were also kind of caught up in the moment. It's like, you you, yeah. you probably haven't, I mean, I didn't I didn't know Dan until that day. But for you, when was the last time you relived that event and talked to somebody that was there? Never. So you don't stop that. Even if I did hear a plane or something. Keep it going. I'm not going to tell him to stop telling his story. Yeah. Like, I want the raw, I want the original, I want, you know. Well, we want to know how you feel about right, it, dude. Right, right. So, throw some bucks in that GoFundMe. Let's, Please. Let's fucking shoot this pool table up and have we a have, We have people that want to talk about their stories, dude. Like, let us let us tell you that. Let us be real with you about it, and, and you know, you're going to feel it. Yeah. There's no way you're not. Like, I mean, these aren't lies. No, 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 no. no. I mean. These are guys stepping out of their comfort zone to. to yeah. To make uh, you gotta no, feel that too, dude, because you can see it. What what I what I like about it is like the guys that we have talked to, um, aren't the the their stories aren't for 
a podcast. There's these are their life stories. Yeah, you know what I mean. These aren't these aren't something that were that they. This isn't a book. This is a, a a reenactment out of some guy's brain that he puts through the microphone to get to you guys. And and if this is what we got to do to make that yeah. happen more often, yeah. let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Like to talk to these people about talking about this, I have to be like, yo, you're in a, you're in a you know, environment where it's comfortable, like, we're, we're not judging you. This isn't easy stuff to express to you guys. you got to understand, we looked at this and we, we saw that there was, like, something that no one else did. Not a lot of people go into environments, I mean, we flew to Afghanistan and killed over 20 people. Like, we were, <laughs> we were both in events where massive firefights, firefights broke out. Think about that, like... Multiple sides are firing Carnage. automatic weapons at both sides. Yeah. Who gets into environments like that? Like, we were 19. <laughs> we were 19 years old, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't drink a beer legally, but I could take it in the life. And we were taught, keep pulling until no one else is coming towards you. Ultimately, that's what it was. Yeah. That's where go away. Yeah. So... Um, there was one last subject I wanted to cover, uh, and it's, it goes back a little bit to our boy, Stevie Lines, who gave us this beautiful what, bottle. What, where are we at right now? Of our, we're, About we're, a... We're empty, Stevie, tell him to pull me up, we're empty. 40%. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to talk, because I know Ireland's big on their, on their, uh, their sports, whether it's all soccer over there, dude. So let's talk about some real football. Where? America. The Patriots. Oh, man, that was embarrassing, dude. It was a tough loss. It was a tough loss. But I know, just tying it back to that guy, to, to, to Steve there, they're really passionate about their sports over there. And I, I think that that could be another, that could be another episode. Like, I, I have... I have season tickets to the Patriots. We go to all the football games. Like you think this, you think the soccer games are wild. You ain't been to Gillette Stadium. That's true. You ain't been to Gillette Stadium in fucking December, January. Buffalo coming to town. So cold out, you can't yeah. get your grill to light to grill your you fucking wings. You guys get wings, fired up. You know they do. They get revved up, dude. If Stevie ever comes stateside, he's you. You're more than welcome to come to a Pats game. Don't show up wearing I want a, that, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't. I can't express how happy I am that he's having some bottle of fucking booze. Dude. I, like, for real, dude. For real, made my fucking night. Made made my made my fucking made my podcast, bro. Like I, that's, it, it's huge to me to know that one somebody else cares, and two, they didn't send a fucking cheap bottle of whiskey. That's a nice no, bottle they, of whiskey. No, they they like what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back in the studio probably over the weekend. Maybe we film a little something Sunday. I don't um, know. How, we're at about 47 right now. So, regardless, we're, we're glad we checked in. Um, I'm talking to a few. Interv- we're talking to the sponsor tomorrow, tentatively. Hmm. Yeah, we got a couple couple people that are looking to sponsor. Uh, and fingers crossed, hope it works out because we we need the equipment. Um, but we have the content, we don't have the equipment to produce, so we're doing what we can with what we have. Um, you know, we've had, we've had five or six serious companies reach out that, that we're looking to sponsor. And so both have a rescheduled for tomorrow and Saturday. Okay. I don't have horseshoes tomorrow, so I'm around. Oh, you can. Horseshoes get moved to Thursday. Yes, for six o'clock. Good. Earlier the better. We get off at 5, so I can at least get there for 5.30. I'll Did meet you? you there. Okay. I'll take my own car. Whatever we got to do. Whatever we got to do to make this shit work, man. I mean... Better mics, better camera, better audio, ultimately. Studio area, man. Like I said, pump that GoFundMe. Please let me give you a video of me putting a 308 AR rounds all through that pool table. Let's just do it. I would so much rather that than sell it to some bimbo who's going to stick in their fucking basement. If we can blow it off, it'll be worth it. Come on. Yeah, I, t- dude, I'll get I'll get my boy Eddie Parker out there with some Tannerite. We'll pack that <laughs> fucking thing. We'll blast it. It'll be a great video. Pump that GoFundMe. We'll see you next week. Hard to kill. Episode fourteen. Stay at it. Peace. Nice.